Can Tesla buy gold and Bitcoin now? What is the next big asset that's going to outperform everything in 2021? What is Alex Mashinsky's next Bitcoin price forecast? We're going to go through all these topics. Alex, you are the CEO of Celsius Network. You have just been named by Masari as the top performing asset of 2020. Let that sink in. Celsius token beat Chainlink, Ethereum, Cardano, Bitcoin, Monero, Litecoin. I can go down this list. We'll look at this chart. But first, I want to address the big statement coming out of Tesla for this week. They are updating their investment policy. I'm just going to read their statement that was filed with the SEC. So it says, in January 2021, we updated our investment policy to provide us with more flexibility to further diversify and maximize returns. And then it says here, we invested an aggregate of 1.5 billion in Bitcoin under this policy. And now they may invest a portion of such cash in certain alternative reserve assets, including digital assets, gold bullion, gold exchange traded funds, and other assets. So we already know they put money in Bitcoin. That's not news. But the question now is, can they now buy gold ETFs and gold bullion? Would that be within the realm of possibility for Elon Musk to do? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Look, uh, Elon is a maverick and obviously <clears throat> he's one of the best uh, CEOs in the world. Uh, Tesla is worth more than uh, all the car companies put together, all the other car companies put together, but they actually don't have that much cash. And obviously they recently raised a lot of cash from investors. So I think it was prudent on them to amend their registration with the SEC and inform all of their investors that are going to be basically not putting the cash with JP Morgan, but rather putting it in uh, in Bitcoin, right? So I think uh, uh, Elon Musk following uh, uh, MicroStrategy and a lot of other companies uh, is deciding that the smartest guys in the world and the richest guys in the world are all deciding that her holding dollars is not the future and that they need a non-correlated asset and the two best non-correlated asset as me and you have been talking about for the last several years, is gold and Bitcoin. Bitcoin has yeah. more scarcity, and that's why it moves a lot. Gold has uh, much more abundancy, and that's why it doesn't move as much, even when you make these announcements. Well, first of all, is it normal for a tech company to take their cash reserves and place it in gold or Bitcoin? Has that been happening? So normally uh, investors, I, I ran a public company before I started Celsius on the NASDAQ and my investment, my investor would punish me very heavily if I took the cash of the company and put it into some other asset. They wanna see you uh, reinvest in your company. They wanna see you uh, uh, accelerate the growth in the company, but using Bitcoin or gold as treasury management yeah. is something completely different. So. So I don't see any issue with uh, replacing, again, the traditional Wells Fargo or JP Morgan treasury management with uh, using Bitcoin or, or gold. Why gold and Bitcoin? Why not treasury bills? Why not um, CDs? Why not fixed income products? So when the yield on those products used to be 5 or 6%, it made a lot of sense. But when the yield is so low, you're actually taking much more risk than the reward that you are given. So it's like picking up a, a penny in front of a steamroller, right? You, yeah. What the reward you get, the risk reward is just not there. So today, uh, crypto or, or Bitcoin more specifically represents a much better risk reward. And again, the smartest people in the world and the richest people in the world are siding with that as, as their investment or their choice. But why did Tesla, a tech giant or an auto manufacturer, whatever category you want to put them in, decide to uh, open the doors to gold in particular? What, what, what is the signal for the gold market, Alex? Right. So it's it's almost like what they're not telling you. What they're not telling you is that they don't trust the US dollar. They're saying by voting for Bitcoin and putting gold as a reference, they're basically saying we do not want our treasury to be held in US dollars because we expect high inflation. We expect debasement. We expect everything besides good news about the US dollar. I think the key for me, at least, is that they're putting Bitcoin and gold in the same category. Like you said, they don't trust a dollar. What can we buy that can hedge against a dollar? Well, it's gold and Bitcoin. So they're putting that together in the same camp. And we're finally seeing 
institutional, not just from the financial institutions, but industrial institutions like Tesla accept this notion that gold and Bitcoin are similar in utility. Do you agree with that? Well, I've been, I think every time I've been on your show, I've been saying exactly the same thing. Yeah. So it's, good, it's good to see uh, that other smart minds are, are uh, finally reaching to the same conclusion. Again, if you're the CEO of a public company, it's much easier for Elon Musk to buy it on his own account. Uh, but convincing his board, convincing the investment community that this is a good thing is definitely a much higher bar. And, and you see, like, <clears throat> you have to look at crypto also from that perspective. 2017, the, the heroes, the ambassadors for, uh, for Bitcoin and Ethereum were uh, 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 people who were not really at the top of the echelon of the business world. Today, uh, some of the best, most famous people in the world are the champions for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and so on. So because of that, you're seeing this massive migration or acceptance uh, of uh, these assets as yeah. alter alternatives uh, to the traditional uh, asset management. I'm uh, just curious to how he's going to execute, if he does buy gold, how he would execute that strategy with gold bars, gold bullion, ETFs. What are, what's in his toolkit? So look, gold is a very established asset. There's plenty of uh, uh, you know ETFs and other or physical storage facilities that you can buy that actually have very low cost bases. Uh, remember, the Bitcoin... Uh, uh, the largest asset, we are the second largest asset. The largest asset holder of Bitcoin is Grayscale, and that costs you 2% a year to hold. Yeah. So, so it's probably four or five times more expensive than actually holding gold. And with, with Celsius as an example, you actually earn 6%. So we are plus six, while most of our competitors are minus two. Right, okay. Now, uh, I, when they made this statement, recently, like yesterday or two days ago, they, the, the Bitcoin market moved up substantially in response. Well, I don't know if that was the sole reason it moved up, but certainly it did have an impact. It made the news. It was on Twitter. It was on social media. Gold had no reaction whatsoever. So I, I wonder why that is. So again, it, it, it goes to scarcity. So I think uh, Elon announced that he uh, either already bought or he's planning to buy a, a billion and a half. So everybody tried to front run uh, Tesla's decision and hopefully get in on the asset before he buys the rest of his allocation. Uh, gold is a is a asset that is ten times larger than all of crypto put together. Yes, so it has much more liquidity. It has a very efficient and liquid uh, futures market. So it moves much less. It's much less volatile. Right. Uh, than the crypto market. So is. what you're saying is 1.5 billion dollars is significant for Bitcoin, but not so much for gold. That's right. Is it significant for Tesla? How much of their cash reserves is put into this investment policy? Do you know? So I don't know their cash position, but I would be surprised if they had more than 10 billion in total in cash. Because remember, they have a huge market cap, but they actually don't have that much cash. They had to go back to the market several times yeah. and raise capital. So. As a percentage of their treasury, that is a very large commitment. It's definitely a much larger commitment, excluding Michael Seller, who put 100% of his treasury into, uh, you know, um, uh, MicroStrategy. Most other companies are going to allocate 5, 10, maybe 15%. And I think here uh, we're talking about the, you know, the higher limit uh, as far as percentage of Tesla's total uh, treasury. Uh, let's talk about using Bitcoin as a form of payment for the Tesla vehicles. Uh, th th I have a few questions about this. First of all, did this come as a shock to you? Not at all. I, actually, I reached out to Tesla to partner with them to allow any Bitcoin holder to take a loan and pay for it, uh, uh, to buy their Tesla with a loan from Celsius. So, yeah. so we, are, uh, we, we love the fact that they are also going to accept Bitcoin. And, um, and there are... Again, tens of thousands of storefronts on the internet that already accept Bitcoin using either Coinbase or some other solution. So that's not a surprise. I think the question is really, is Tesla going to keep the Bitcoin when they get paid in it or are they going to sell it into fiat? That is the question we need to ask. Well, first of all, on. why are they doing this? I mean, what, what, why, why do you need a second form of, of currency, so to speak. I mean, I could pay with U.S. dollars, Chinese yuan if I'm in China, euro if I'm in Euro. Why, why do I need Bitcoin now to pay with uh, to, to pay for my cars? You're right. I mean, look, the, there is no difference, and and uh, 
The, the Tesla team is very good at branding. Okay. The crypto community is a very loyal community. And if you can convince the crypto community to choose Tesla as their car, I see. that's uh, another 10, a few million people that are going to buy Teslas. So I right. think they're just very, very good with branding. Okay, so it's kind of a PR um, move. What, what, okay, what is a mechanism behind an actual purchase with, a, with, with Bitcoin? Say I have Bitcoin in a wallet. Um, what, what's next? Do I just call up Tesla and say, can, you, can, you, can I transfer this from my wallet? How does that work? It's never been done on, on this kind of scale before. Right. I don't think any of the car makers have created these kind of programs. <clears throat> but I'll, just to give you an example, uh, almost basically any uh, storefront you can create on the internet, right, uh, uh, it automatically comes with a Coinbase account or some other BitPay account or anything like that. So most, uh, 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 most of the current online shopping experiences have that option in paying crypto. They, most people that use crypto to pay for anything are, are sitting there and crying, right? Because they basically use their Bitcoin at 5,000 or 10,000 or 15,000. And here it is worth 45,000 or whatever the price is today. So, so if you bought a sofa, it cost you five times as much. If you bought a car, it cost you five times as much. Yeah. So our, our strategy is to, again, huddle your Bitcoin Take a loan in dollars and pay for your Tesla. That's how, that's our strategy. We don't recommend paying with your Bitcoin because then you let go of your Bitcoin. What what does this signal in terms of Tesla's, I guess, outlook on Bitcoin's volatility? I, I, because let's say you can buy a car now with two Bitcoins. Sounds about right. You can buy a Model S about two Bitcoins right now. Yes. I mean, it must be frustrating if, let's say, the next day the price drops to 0 0.5 Bitcoins and then it goes up to three Bitcoins the following day. It must be frustrating for a merchant. So in a sense, aren't they signaling that they think Bitcoin is mature enough to not be so volatile in the future? They're not. And Bitcoin is definitely going to continue to be very volatile. <laughs> okay. Wow. Uh, look, Bitcoin is not a, a good form of payment. So, and yeah, the it's not a good form of payment, but they're still doing this. <laughs> and the dollar is a horrible store of value. It continues to lose its value, but it's an ex excellent form of payment. So... Yes, we can switch the two. We can use Bitcoin as a, as a form of payment, but that doesn't mean it's good at it. Well, so, what about gold? It seems to do both, right? Gold is a much more stable asset. It is. Uh, it can be used as a form of payment. There are governments, there are countries that settle their payments with gold all over the world. Uh, so it's definitely something much more stable. But I think, again, look, we. I don't expect Bitcoin to become a form of payment for, for several more years because it needs to stabilize at a certain price yeah. level. In my view, it's it's got to stabilize above $200,000 and and then you can start using it also as a form of payment. Today- $200,000, uh, okay. Yeah, it's extremely volatile asset to use as a form of payment. Yeah, that was my next question. You know, okay, let, I can buy a Tesla now with Bitcoin, but when am I going to be able to call up Pizza Hut and say, hey, look, uh, and the guy says to me, your, your order is twenty two ninety five. Would you be paying that with cash, credit, or Bitcoin? Can I hear that question in my lifetime? So look, Celsius is a hodler community. Every, anyone who invested with us, with our strategy, uh, was the best performer of all of 2020. Okay. So, so I, I'm promising you that uh, anyone who continues with the strategy will also be the best performer of 2021. You sell your Bitcoin, you use your Bitcoin for any purposes, you exchange it for any goods or service, you will be sorry for that. That's all I have to say. You will be sorry for that. Okay, I'm going to coach you on that one. Um, <laughs> why? Can you elaborate? Why would you be sorry for that? Because there is the scare. Look, we, we're seeing the avalanche of new retail and corporate and institutional customers coming in. Our, our corporate applications are up 10 times, not... 10%, 10 times since November, okay? So 10 times as many companies are yeah. reaching out and saying, please open a corporate account. I want to buy some Bitcoin. I want to deposit Bitcoin with you because I wanted to earn interest. So when you see that avalanche of demand, both from retail, from corporate and institutional, you know that the price is going higher. It's a supply demand issue. The amount of Bitcoin being created is fixed. 
Yeah. Right. The, the inflation of Bitcoin is three percent a year. Alex, I don't think the, I don't think the Tesla fans are going to listen to you though. I think they're still going to take their two Bitcoins and buy a Model S. What would you say to them? We we can give them a one percent loan. They can <laughs> borrow money from us at one percent per year, and use that money to buy Tesla. And within a year or two. The, the amount of Bitcoin they have left will pay for the Tesla that they already own. All right, let's get right down to it. And then we'll move on to your price forecast. Should Elon Musk buy either gold ETFs or even more Bitcoin under his new investment policy? What's going to happen to the market price? Would that start a chain reaction of buying for both gold and Bitcoin? So MicroStrategy is a great leading indicator. Uh, it's up more than Bitcoin uh, for the last year. Uh, so uh, what what that st stock performance tells you is that companies that accumulate the asset, not the trade in it, not the ones that use the asset and then sell it, the ones who accumulate the asset, like MicroStrategy, Wall Street is giving them a premium. Uh, G uh, Grayscale is trading at a premium. MicroStrategy is trading at a premium. Most new companies that are listed or have changed their business model to focus on Bitcoin are trading at a premium. So I think you're going to see more and more okay. Wall Street firms decide to accumulate the asset. That's what I was saying. We, what we have to watch very carefully is Tesla going to accumulate the Bitcoins. If they do, then they will start getting a premium uh, for that accumulation. What about for gold? Could the same market impact happen for gold? So look, I think gold will start moving. I think we need to see more pressure on the dollars, continued pressure on the dollar for okay. gold to start moving. And so, we haven't seen that yet. I mean, gold is down 10%, yeah. kind of stabilized. And, and we have to see if it's just, uh, is it, uh, are, are we seeing a bottom here and it's going to bounce back up yeah. or are we going to see it going further down? So, so when we see that, we will understand, we will be able to be much smarter about where gold is going from here. But so, I think many corporates are buying, uh, you know, the GLD or mm -hmm. any of the other, uh, 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 ETFs, that's the easiest way to own gold. And the scarcity of gold has not yet come to, to light, has not come to the market. So you need a much bigger move in the dollar to start seeing the price of gold going up. So bottom line, gold's price action needs macro factors, not Elon Musk. It's not enough. Elon Musk announcing gold and buying gold is not enough. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Finally, now the moment of truth. What's your Bitcoin forecast? Well, before we get into that, you were right. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna point it out. You were right for 2020. 2020, the price exceeded your forecast, and you also call for a pullback in 2021. So it it pulled back to not quite as low as you had said. I think you were being a little too conservative. I felt that, but you did. You you were right. It moved downward. That was the same direction. Now it's climbing back. It's reached new all time highs today as we speak. What's next, Alex? Yeah, so so I uh, when Bitcoin was over forty thousand, I said it's going to go down below twenty uh, thirty thousand. I thought it was going to go down to twenty four to twenty six. It hit twenty nine, and then Elon Musk changed his header uh, uh, to be Bitcoin. He just changed everything about himself to just say the word Bitcoin, and we had a big pump. So so if we if I had a few more days, I would probably hit my target anyway. But I think look, I think we're going to hit a high of about 160,000 before retrenchment. And I'm talking about this year. So we're gonna see a, a major bull run uh, to those levels. Again, Fibonacci support is that uh, like, there's one level at 85,000, there's another level uh, 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 just below 100,000 and then 160,000. So, uh, so I think we will uh, hit those levels, but then we're gonna see a retrenchment as you're gonna see all the people FOMOing in, also selling their coins. So I, I, I think we're going to close the year below 100,000. Okay, I'm just digesting that call. Uh, <laughs> let me uh, follow up with you and uh, see, what, uh, first of all, what are you basing that on? Can you walk us through the analysis? Right, so again, we know, we know what the supply is. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, what we don't know is how many sellers are at every level. So what, when we hit that level of 41,000, a few weeks back, uh, the sellers were the mining companies, the people who mined Bitcoin, dumped all their coins, and there was also some hedging by institution, meaning selling puts uh, 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 or buying puts in, in, into the market. So then we broke through that level in most recent bull run, right? We kind of tested that 41, 42,000, ran all the way up to 45, 
and we found a bunch of sellers over there. Yeah. That's what we have to test. How many sellers are at 50,000, 60,000, 70,000 and so on. So what I'm basing again, this is this is uncharted territories. We have to uh, really test them and see how many people who hold Bitcoin and these are mostly retail holders are going to be tempted to sell their coins at these levels. How many people like you were saying at 80,000 will decide that they rather have a Tesla than one Bitcoin? Yeah, that, that's the test we have to go through. Yeah, makes sense. Well, uh, many people didn't believe your call last year when you said Bitcoin would breach new all time highs and uh, look what happened. So I, 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 uh, I'm looking very much forward to the price action this year. Thank you very much, Alex. Just to add one thing. So, yes. so we manage eight and a half billion. Uh, we have hundreds of thousands of customers, institutional, corporate and retail. And that's why we have a much better view into the market than others who may be just retail or just in, like Grayscale is only institutional. So they don't really have their fingers in the retail market or in the corporate market. So, All right, well, let, let just uh, sentiment based on what you've observed then, is it, is it, it, we know there's a lot of interest. It has a reached mania levels, do you think? It, it is not. Like if you go on Google Trends and you uh, look, if you type the word Bitcoin and Google Trends, you will see that the peak this year is lower than it was in 2017, meaning it's not all retail. So if the price is higher, but the peak is lower, the peak of Google Trends is lower, that means that most of the demand is not coming from the retail. Many, many more people know about Bitcoin already, and most of the demand is not coming just from retail. Uh -huh. So it's that mix between corporate, retail, and institution that is the secret to this year run up. And you have to remember the corporates are not selling that Bitcoin. When MicroStrategy or Tesla buy it, they don't trade it, they don't sell it. It doesn't matter what the price is, they sit on it. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're actually going to reduce the volatility, not increase the volatility. We're still gonna have retail sellers. We're still gonna have institutionals trading around their positions, but the corporate guys are like an anchor for Bitcoin. They're a long-term anchor that stabilizes the price of Bitcoin. Do hit the like button and do subscribe to our channel.